This video is on the first of the seven big questions, the pitfalls of regression analysis or the things that can go wrong and bias the coefficient estimate on the key x variable when you're estimating causal effects. So uh, this is in section 6.41 of the textbook. And so the question for reverse causality is could the dependent variable or the outcome variable affect the key x variable? And if so, then there is probably going to be some bias in your estimated causal effect. Okay, so let's take the case from the last video on what you should control for, what happens when you control for a variable. And so that's looking at how average daily TV hours watched among children affects their body mass index. And so recall that when I have an arrow pointing like this, then the value of that arrow represents the true causal effect of a one unit increase on the pointing variable on the variable being pointed at. Okay, so, so A here represents the true and unknown value of how a one hour change in TV affects body mass index on average. Okay, so we'll estimate a model of regressing BMI on TV hours and some other variables. And so the estimate for beta one hat is going to tell us how does BMI move on average with the one unit increase in TV watching holding those other factors constant. Okay, so we hope that beta one is an accurate estimate of A, but the problem is that is that that causal effect is not the only reason why these two variables are going to move together. There could be other things contributing to that. To that. And that's what I covered down here. Okay, so here are the three main things that can contribute to these two variables moving together. So first of all, uh, TV hours could affect BMI. That's the effect that we want to try to capture. But second, there could be the reverse causality, that BMI affects TV hours. So I label that B here, not to be confused with beta. Okay, uh, then number three is that it, uh, there could be some other factors, probably uncontrolled for, unobservable, that could affect both TV hours and BMI. Okay, so a good example here is bad weather. So if there's bad weather, it could lead to kids uh, being inside more, that could cause them to watch more TV. It also could lead them to be less active, which would cause them to perhaps gain weight. Okay, we're going to take the reverse causality argument and bring that to the next slide. Okay, so here is that reverse causality. And note that it could be positive or negative. Either one would produce a reverse causality and a bias. Okay, so let's take the case that uh, B is less than zero. So that says... Um, as body mass index increases, then people watch less TV. And so this could be from parents saying, hey, it looks like you're gaining weight. Uh, I want you to watch less TV and go do some physical activity. Well, if that's the case, if B is negative, that's contributing negatively to how TV hours and BMI move together. And so there's a negative bias on the estimate for beta one. You're going to understate the true effect. Now, in contrast, if B is greater than zero, and that means that higher body mass index leads to more TV watching. So this could be a lethargy argument. And so that means that uh, this positive value of B is going to contribute positively to why the two variables move together. And so it's going to cause a positive bias in your estimated effect or the estimate for beta one. So you're overstating the true effect. Okay, now let's compare two examples and see what can we learn from different estimates. Okay, and so in the first case, we're just bringing over the TV and BMI example. And in the, in the second case, we're looking at how does meditation affect blood pressure? Okay, so in this case, I'm gonna suppose that uh, the true effect of TV on body mass index is zero or possibly positive. And I'm gonna suppose that there's a positive reverse causality. This is the lethargy argument. Okay, so the first question is, what is the direction of the bias on beta one hat? And the answer is that it's a positive bias uh, because B is greater than zero here. Okay, and then if beta one hat equals zero, what can you conclude? Okay, well, uh, it shouldn't equal zero because there is some reverse causality. So it's possible A equals zero, but that reverse causality should make them move together. And so what it would likely mean is that there's some other bias 
that's driving the estimate towards zero. Maybe it's a measurement error or some kind of omitted variables bias. Okay, and what if beta one hat is greater than zero? What can you conclude? And here the answer is nada. You have no idea if the positive coefficient estimate, meaning that the two variables are moving together positively, could would be coming from the effect that you're trying to capture, TV affecting BMI, or the reverse causality, BMI affecting TV. You can't determine that. Okay, now in this other example, uh, it differs because whereas here the, the supposed effect and the reverse causality moved in the same direction, well now they're moving in opposite directions. So I'm supposing that meditation either has a zero effect on blood pressure or a negative effect, that it improves blood pressure. The reverse causality is that higher blood pressure could cause a person to want to meditate in order to try to reduce the blood pressure. And so B would be greater than zero, meaning that they're more likely to meditate or perhaps they even meditate more often as a result of higher blood pressure. Okay, so our estimate for beta one here is going to represent how these two variables move together, uh, holding those other factors constant. Okay, so the first question, what is the direction of the bias on beta one hat that is from reverse causality? Well, it should be positive here because uh, of the positive reverse causality, just like in the other case. Okay, if beta one hat equals zero, what can you conclude? Okay, so one possibility is that A equals zero and B at least is very close to zero, and so we're not detecting any relationship in either direction. Um, but the more likely scenario is that, is that uh, A is in fact um, some negative number, B is some positive number, and they're offsetting each other. Okay, it doesn't mean that they're the opposite, that A is negative two, B is uh, plus two. Uh, that's not going to happen because these are measured in different units. But even though they're not the same number, they could be offsetting each other, uh, making it close to zero. And if beta one hat is greater than zero, what can you conclude? Well, uh, this probably means that the reverse causality is dominating any possible effect that meditation has on blood pressure. So this could mean that A equals zero or A is some small number compared to the magnitude of blood pressure taking into account the different units that they're measured on. Okay, so unfortunately, reverse causality can rarely be tested for. But sometimes, as in our prior example, uh, it's the logical explanation for some estimate that's contrary to what you think it should be or the opposite sign of what you think it should be. Okay, so the question comes down to, could the dependent variable affect the key X variable? Okay, so and, and if it could, either positively or negative, then there could be reverse causality. And... Sometimes there's a fix, but it's rare. Rarely can you actually address this. And so it's something that needs to be acknowledged in any study that, hey, there's a possibility there's some reverse causality here that could not be addressed. Okay, next up is big question two on omitted variables bias in the next video.